All right, let's take a look at some problems that are mainly about interpreting these magnitudes of K. So we've got problem eight here, which is looking at a polyprotic acid. And we can see that polyprotic acids lose their hydrogens one at a time. So you've got two different dissociations happening, two different K values. So we've got Ka1, where we lose the first hydrogen right here, Ka2, where you lose the second hydrogen right here. So if you make a solution that is 0.5 molar H2SO3, and it's gonna start dissociating, What's, what are you going to have in the highest concentration and what's going to be in the lowest concentration in your solution? Well, you want to look at these Ka values. You want to say, okay, this Ka value is bigger than this one. So that means you make more product. And this one right here is, you know, smaller. So you make less product. So the thing that I'm going to make the least of is SO3 to minus because that is the product of the second reaction that doesn't make very much. If you're wondering why didn't I say H plus is small, well H plus is getting made in the first reaction as well. So you're going to have more H plus than you do SO3 2 minus because there's two reactions generating an H plus. Well who's going to be the larger concentration? Both of these reactions are reactants favored. So K is less than one. So that means that your amount of reactants is going to be greater than your amount of products. So my original reactant is gonna be the thing that's there in the largest amount. So this is going to be my highest concentration. And when you find the pH of the mixture, there's two different ways of doing it. You can make it into a two-step process. So you could say, one, you could do an ice chart for your Ka1 and then find your H plus um, concentration that's made and then also find the amount of HSO3 that is made and then you can take that um, HSO3 value and do an ice, a second ice chart. So you can do ice chart for Ka um, whoops for Ka2 and using the amount of HSO3 you just calculated as your starting value and then you can find how much additional H plus was made from the second reaction. But then if we look back and think about what we just said, that first reaction makes a lot more products than the second reaction. How much more? Well, if you compare 10 to the minus two um, versus 10 to the minus eighth, this is t 10 to the six times bigger. So six orders of magnitude. It is way bigger. So th what that means is the amount of H plus generated by the second reaction is going to be negligible compared to how much is made in this first reaction. So that simplifies everything and we can just do um, this step right here. So you can just set up a nice chart. So the general rule with polyprotic acids is that you can pretend like it's just a monoprotic acid when you are doing the titration here because the later dissociations will generate so little H plus you can just ignore it. All right, let's take a look at nine. Who is the strongest acid? Well, the way I think about this one is you've got two competing reactions here. You've got the forward reaction in which um, HX is acting as the acid, because remember the acid is the hydrogen giver. Okay, and then you've got the reverse reaction, whoops, in which case HY is acting as the acid. So HY is the acid, so it's being the hydrogen giver. So I'd say, well, who is being a better hydrogen giver? Well, let's look at our K value here. K is less than one. That means it is reactants favored. And another way of interpreting this, if something's reactants favored, that means that this, you know, reverse reaction is kind of better than that forward reaction. Because forward reaction isn't occurring very much. The reverse reaction is occurring more. So who is better at being a hydrogen giver? Well, it looks down here like this reaction is winning, okay? So HY is going to be the stronger acid because this reaction in which HY is being an acid is more favorable than the forward reaction is. All right, so last one in this video, let's take a look at 
buffers here. So you're asked to design a buffer that has a pH of 7 using materials from the list below. So first thing, which substances would you mix together to create this buffer and what's your reasoning? So when we are looking for a buffer, we need to be looking for two things. Uh, one thing is you need to have a weak acid and the conjugate base. Okay. If we scroll down and look at this list though, there are plenty of combinations of weak acid and conjugate base. So this right here, acetic acid, it's a weak acid. And then this right here, acetate ion, that's the conjugate base. Okay, but I've got lots of other options too. Here's NH4, that is an acid. And then NH3 is the conjugate base of that acid. I can scroll down here and say, oh, it looks like HCO3. That looks like an acid, right? And so this would be the conjugate base. You recognize the conjugate base just has one fewer uh, hydrogen than the weak acid. That's the rule here. So I've got several acid-base pairs here. Here's another acid-base pair. This could be my weak acid, and this could be its conjugate base. And funnily enough, this guy could also act as a weak acid with this one right here as its conjugate base. So HPO4 could go either way. All right, so we've got several options based on our first, we've got several options for buffers. Now what we want to do is we want to look at the pH. So remember we said for buffers, the concentration of HA is going to be similar to the concentration of A minus. You're going to have decent amounts of both things. That's what makes it work as a buffer. And when HA and A minus are roughly equal, the pH is going to be close to the pKa. So we are looking for a weak acid conjugate base pair in which the pKa of the acid matches the desired pH of your buffer. So now let's go back and analyze this list again, and I'm going to look for an acid that has a pKa close to my desired pH, which in this case is 7. So if I scroll through this, this list, and you want to be able to do this part again without a calculator, this could be a multiple choice question, I'm just going to do a rough estimate of what the pKa is going to be. So if my exponent is 5, my pKa is going to be around the 4 to 5 range. If it's 10, it's going to be somewhere around the 10 range. This is a KB, so we should ignore that. Uh, over here, it's going to be somewhere around 11. Here, it's going to be around 8, and here it'll be around 13. So which acid has a pKa closest to our desired pH? Well, it looks right here like this is our winner. So H2PO4 is our going to be our acid. And we are going to mix it with the conjugate base. Remember, we figure out what the conjugate base is just by removing a hydrogen. So it becomes HPO4. And since I took away a positive hydrogen, now the charge is negative 2. Um, if you look in the table, since these are both ions, the way that we get them in solution is they're part of an ionic compound. So what I would do is I would take sodium H2PO4 and then sodium HPO4, dissolve it in water. The sodiums are just going to be spectators, they're not doing anything. The ones that make the buffer a buffer are these two species right here. Okay, so now we've got a buffer with a pH close to 7. It's not exactly 7 though, so how do we make it exactly 7? Well, let's go back to our Ka expression right here. All right, and we know our Ka, I gotta scroll down and look at it again, so our Ka is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 8th. Okay, 6.3 times 10 to the negative 8th. Okay, now what am I going to do over here? Well, if anyone ever gives you a pH of a solution, they are telling you what the hydrogen ion concentration is because the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the minus pH. So if we want the pH to be 7, that means the hydrogen concentration is 10 to the minus 7. So I can go over here and I can plug this in, 10 to the minus 7, and then I still don't know A minus or HA. And that's okay, because the question is just asking me for the ratio. So I want to um, isolate this fraction right here. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10 to the negative 7. And I'm going to end up with my A minus to HA ratio is, let's see, so it's 6.3 times 10 to the negative 8 over 10 to the negative 7, which ends up being, I think, uh, 0.63. Right, so like 0.63 to 1. So, because uh, this would be 0.63 times 10 to the negative 7, and those would cancel out. Okay, so what that means is you need 
um, this many A minuses for for this many HAs. And actually, let's do another let's do another quick check here. Let's calculate the exact pKa here. So if we take this and we plug this in our calculator, this is another good thing to do. So I'm gonna take the log of 6.3 e negative 8, and I'm gonna say, okay, the pKa is 7.2. So this is what the pH would be if my concentrations of HA and A minus were exactly equal. Notice that um, I want my desired pH is pH of 7, which is a little bit less than 7.2. So I want my solution to be a little more acidic than this solution right here would be. In order for it to be a little more acidic, I need to have more of the acid component. And look, when I checked my work just here, it looks like we're saying we need um, one acid per every, you know, 0.63 A minuses. So it looks like we need more of the acid than the base to make, to have this be a buffer with a pH of seven. Um, one way in which we could think about, you know, how this translate, maybe you're actually going to make a solution here. Your solution could be, you know, one molar HA and then, you know, 0.63 molar A minus. This would be how you'd actually go about and make this. Okay.